This video was made possible by Skillshare. Start learning for free for two months by going to skl.sh slash hai30. Bonjour everyone, and welcome to another episode of Half as Interesting, the show that's like if CGB Grey and a bad stand-up comedian had a kid who read too many Wikipedia articles. My name is Sam, and I'm going to talk about French trains in just a moment, but we're beginning with a note from my writer Adam, because he knows I'll just read whatever is put in front of me. Hello audience, this is Adam, Sam's very funny and extremely good looking writer. I'm here to let you know that Sam speaks French, and so in this video I have given him as many French words to say as possible because Sam gets stressed about pronouncing them perfectly and I find that funny, or as the French might say, amusant. Au revoir, now, mes amis. Alright monsieur et mademoiselle, now that that's fini, let's get started. The good news is, even if you don't know French, this should be easy to follow because a lot of words sound the same in English and French. They call trains les trains, they call rails les rails, and they call what happened to their trains and rails in 2014 stupide. See, it's all very easy to comprendre. Our story begins in 2009 when les trains et les rails were getting a bit run down, and so, faster than you could say en deux trois, the French government decided to spend 20 billion dollars, or 18 milliards d'euros, to get a new fleet of sleeker, faster, roomier trains. Fantastique, you might think, but in fact, things were far from fantastique. You see, the French rail operator, Réseau Ferré de France, is a separate operation from the train company, which is called Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer. Now, normally I would abbreviate Réseau Ferré de France as RFF and Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer as SNCF, but instead I'm gonna say their full names each time because Adam thinks that's funny, I guess? Back in 1997, the rail operator, whose name, again, is Réseau Ferré de France and the train company, again, Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer, were all one company, which was also called Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer. But in 1997, a new EU directive meant that the government had to split them into two different government-run entities, one for les rails and one for les trains, and it was that separation that created the opportunity for miscommunication. But still, things should have been easy. It wasn't like they had to play la vie en rose on a croissant. All the rail company, Réseau Ferré de France, needed to do was tell the train company, Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer, how wide to make the trains. The problem was, they took all their measurements from train platforms built within the last 30 years, forgetting that the older platforms in rural areas were built to a different standard and ran about 8 inches or 20 centimetres narrower than the newer ones. They then gave those flawed measurements to the train company, Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer. Fast forward a few years and voila. 2,000 new trains had been completed and the trains were beautiful. Sleek, fast, roomy, everything looked like it would be magnifique. But that's when they discovered that getting the new trains into the older stations was like trying to stuff a baguette into a bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. They just wouldn't fit. To be clear, this wasn't just a little mistake. It was a full-blown catastrophe. 1,300 of the 8,700 stations in France, about 1 in 7, were too narrow for the new trains to fit into. At first the government tried to keep their mistake a secret, but soon the news was broken by the magazine Le Canard Enchaîné, prompting cries of sacre bleu from the train makers and cries of why is our government dumber than a bucket of escargot from all the French people. Seeing as fitting into stations is one of the more important qualifications a train needs to check alongside fitting on train tracks and not being an airplane, the French government quickly got to work fixing the problem by shaving off the edges of the older, narrower platforms. It wasn't a particularly difficult fix, just an expensive one. According to the Société Nationale des Chemins de Fer, these repairs cost the French about $68.4 million, or 60 million d'euros. For context, that's enough money to buy 7.1 million copies of Les Miserables on DVD, or buy 2.5 million plates of foie gras de canard mi cuit at au pied de cochon in Paris. But if you're heading on vacation soon to Paris, or Bordeaux, or even Montpellier, don't worry, the platforms have been fixed, and everything runs as smooth as a bowl of mousse au chocolat, and this French faux pas feels as distant as déjà vu. If you want to learn how to be the kind of designer who doesn't make massive multi-million dollar mistakes, you should check out Skillshare. It's an online learning community for creators with thousands of classes in business, design, music production, photography, and much, much more. For example, if you want to learn how to make animations like this one in this video, you should check out Jake Bartlett's class on animating with ease in After Effects. It's got 18 lessons that'll walk you through all the steps needed to make your animations look smooth and professional. Now is the time to start to make 2020 the year when you learn new skills or deepen existing passions, and Skillshare makes this easy and fun for a great price. You'll get access to their thousands of courses for less than $10 a month when you sign up for an annual subscription. You can also go try it out for free for two months when you go to skl.sh slash hai30.